Hey yo, today you're gonna know, Watch Dogs explained by a kid. Watch Dogs is a game starring a hacker named Aiden Pierce, who is, in my opinion, one of the most badass game protagonists. Also, the person who voice acted Aiden, Noam Jenkins, played a role in Saw 2 where he got killed in the opening scene. Alright, enough with the fun facts, let's get into this. Basically, the war starts off with Aiden driving, and his niece, Lena, and his nephew, Jackson, in the back. Lena suggests they can go to Pawnee, and Aiden agrees. A supposed old friend of Aiden, Damien, hires a fixer, Maurice, to take out Aiden. As Aiden's driving to Pawnee, he looks to his right and sees a motorcycle. Then he looks to his left, and he sees another motorcycle, but this time with Maurice riding it. Maurice aims his gun at the car and shoots the tire out, leading to a car crash that kills Lena. We check in on Aiden now, and currently he's... Well, he's questioning him, Maurice. Aiden asks him who ordered the hit, and when Maurice lies and says he doesn't know, Aiden points out his lie by audio proof. Hit the family? Not a problem. Nope. I'll scare him good. You'll never hear from him again. After Aiden shoots an unloaded gun at Maurice to scare him, Maurice grabs a bat in an attempt to subdue Aiden, but I think you know how well that goes. <laughs> Where the hell you been? Oh yeah, I also remember this guy is gonna be somewhere in the story later. <laughs> so continuing on with the explanation, Aiden shows up to his nephew's birthday party. Jackson, that one kid that we mentioned earlier, who is turning 10. Aiden reunites with Nicole, or Nikki, his little sister, and Jax. Aiden decides to hack a call Nikki's on after hearing her being scared and saying that the police can trace the call. He hears the person on the call threatening Nikki and saying he knows where she lives. This leads to an argument between Nikki and Aiden about how Aiden always tries to fix the problems yet always makes them worse. And about how Nikki just thinks this is a prank call and Aiden thinks this is serious. Aiden, God, you have not changed at all. We do not need your help. Please stop trying to fix our problems. Every time you try, you just make things worse. Yeah, I'm with you, Jax. I'm not about hitting women and all of Aiden should give this bitch a big sock in the jaw with that baton he has. After Aiden traces the call and does some Aiden stuff to the crank caller, he hits a bad boy, 17, to help him find out who hired the crank caller. After all, bad boy 17 is his professional person or lawyer. The reason I say that is because Bad Boy 17 at one point says this. How can I refuse my best client? They find out the crane calls are coming from the loot district. And that that that's it at the mission. I don't know what else you want from me. Afterwards we have the backstage pass mission. He goes into the CTO list, blah blah blah. Bad boy 17's impressed. I'm not really going through this whole mission because there's not much that happens besides there's a big shootout. I don't feel like showing all that because I don't have any footage from it. <gasps> Okay, after whatever that current press to me talking was, we got backseat driver where you're doing a fixer job as a getaway driver. And you're supposed to drive this guy undetected to the destination he's trying to go to. Aiden drives one of this closed destination where Lucky Quinn is waiting for them. And let's just say, Lucky Quinn's feeling a little bit too mad today. <laughs> Queen comes up to Aiden's window and tells him to tell his employer that he'll call him again, which I'm thinking he is referring to Jordy. Afterward, Bad Boy 17 calls Aiden to tell him that they have to meet up, and Aiden's pretty confused because Bad Boy 17 was never willing to show his identity. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. Bad Boy 17? Clara. <laughs> Yep, Bad Boy 17's a girl, Claire Lyle. Why did I say that so fucking weird? She basically goes over how the reason they need to meet up is because she was in the open the world with a new phone, that they was gonna need their phone, a fucking Russian or something, I don't know. I don't wanna go through the whole conversation. I'm just glad to start calling her Claire now, cause I'm very used to calling her Claire. So 
the second half of the mission goes is that you kill some guards. After you kill the guard, you need to get into a building. You need to kill a guard with the access code. You need to hack the access point or breach the unsecured laptop. They could have just said hack the access point. I don't know why they had to make it so long. And now Aiden has to get the hell out of here because Claire just realized that the police are coming with some French swear words or something. Because I forgot to mention that Claire was like French, Canadian, American or something like that. So next mission is called Thanks for the Tip. In this mission, you basically got to find out who hired the caller. You also got to find out what the source is coming from. So you basically hack some CTOS boxes, leading to some very unlackluster hacking. Then you find out who hired the crank caller by hacking into an apartment, hacking into a phone that's being ringed. Damien motherfucking Brinks, aka the other hacker from the Merlot. Aiden's roaming around the wherever you call this place, I don't know, Chicago, to find the boozed up Damien. My sister. Damien starts smart talking Aiden, which causes Aiden to go on his usual shtick, or whatever you call it. Six year old girl. My niece died because you went too far. Oh, you're adorable. The conversation ends up turning physical. When I say physical, I mean Aiden pushing Damien. Honest to God, I never knew Damien actually had a leg brace. And Damien claims there's a second hacker. Sounds like some juicy news to me. The mission ends with Damien walking away. Next mission is not the pizza guy. You have to meet up with Jordy on the rooftop, and when you find him, you see him with some tied up people. When Aiden sees the sight, he drops the F-bomb. One of the only times he says it in the game. Oh, fuck. Afterwards, Aiden asks a very important question. What happened? Well, security in these buildings is pretty tight. So, people like this feel nice and secure living way up here. I mean, these people just have a simple chain lock on their door. I guess they want to have a good look at the pizza guy before they open it all the way. After that, Aiden asked about the problem that Jordy said there was. Well, that's why I brought the bolt cutter. He opens the door this much, there's a chain right there, I slip him in and snip, and guess what? It's not the pizza guy. Afterwards, Jordy said you need to clear through all the fixers to get through Lance Brenner. Jordy notes to not kill him because he's going to be important to you. Well, at least for like two minutes anyway. Aiden and Jordy agree that Aiden will go down and do the main work while Jordy will help Aiden when he needs help by sniping. I shot him in the knee, is that fine? Aiden interrogates Lance and tries to get some answers out of him. And if I'm being honest, I actually have no idea what he's trying to get answers for. But Aiden points out Lance's two lives. One as a family man and two as a person involved in a bunch of cold cases, so basically a criminal. This aggravates Lance enough to reach for the gun. After Lance fails, Lance finally gives Aiden a name, Angelo Tucci, a guy who was hired by the Chicago South Club to kidnap Raul Leonzo, the guy who got stabbed in the bottom of the eighth. I told you he'd be back! Anyway, it actually doesn't matter. You can kill Lance if you want, even though your reputation will be slightly decreased. And also, you have to kill a ever-living shit ton of fixers. After you kill the fixers, you call Clara to tell her to try to find Angelo Tucci. The only family member Clara can find of Angelo is Helena Tucci. She mentions that she likes to post on social media, and it says she likes cats, and likes doing selfies, and some other stuff I forgot. So basically it just sounds like the typical normie 2014 girl. And Helena loves social media so much that she literally posted about a meeting she had at the Willis Tower so Aiden goes there and calls her and pretends to be Angelo's doctor. Helena thinks it's sus so she calls Angelo and tells him that she thinks that the cops are coming after him. Angelo tells Helena to stop calling him because the police will be tracing the call. Good point. If the police actually were chasing after Angelo, why would you, why would you call him? Oh, little did Angelo know. It wasn't the cops who were tracing his call. It was some edgy hacker named Aiden Pierce. You can either choose to kill him or knock him out. But I mean, come on. Why would you not kill him? The next mission is dressed in peels. Aiden walks into the Palin Correctional Center and holds a gun up, going through a metal detector in order to get arrested. They're apparently arresting him and bringing him in prison. I don't know what the logic behind that is. I mean, I know that he's a man holding up a gun wearing a bandana, a gray hoodie, and a black hat. With an anonymous symbol on it, but still. Anyway, a prisoner who supposedly owes Jordy a favor 
gives Aiden his phone and his baton under his prison uniform that he's going to wear later. Anyway, Aiden hacks the name thing and makes it say that his name is Joe Smith. And also on the height chart, it's revealed that he's six foot two and 69 in Why is there so many sex jokes in this one? And then Aiden kills some guards, and our first... <laughs> our first cannon enforcer attack. Anyway, we meet up with our boy Raw Leonzo and tell him that if he says anything about Aiden's ID to the cops, he will fucking end you. And that's it of Act 1. Thanks for watching, man.